In this lesson, we're going to look at another common accounting question, which is what happens when your deferred revenue balance changes. Now, as with accrued expenses, which we just went over, there's really two things that could happen here. Deferred revenue could increase, meaning that your deferred revenue balance is going up and you're not actually recognizing it as revenue right away, or your deferred revenue balance could be going down, meaning that it's turning into real revenue. Recall that the reason we have deferred revenue is that oftentimes you pay a company for services or products, but they do not actually deliver those products as soon as you pay them. They don't actually perform the services at the instant you pay them. Instead, they deliver the products later or they perform the services later. The classic example here is if you sign up for an iPhone, for example, and you pay for a two-year contract, if you pay them for 24 months upfront, everything you pay them goes to deferred revenue, and then that turns into real revenue over the course of 24 months. So what happened is if you pay them 100, then that goes to deferred revenue, and then over the course of 24 months, 100 divided by 24 would get recognized each month of your contract. So we're going to go through both those scenarios in accounting terms right now and show you exactly what happens. So first, under interview questions here, I'm just going to say that deferred revenue goes up by 100. We'll start with the income statement. So as with some of the other items we've seen, there are no changes to the income statement here because deferred revenue does not correspond to actual revenue or expenses, so it does not show up on the income statement. Moving to the cash flow statement, no changes on the top part. Deferred revenue going up. Deferred revenue is a liability, so it's going to increase cash flow. Some cash flow from operations is going to be up by 100. No changes under investing or financing. So overall, our cash is up by 100 at the end of our cash flow statement here. Moving over to the balance sheet, cash we know is up by 100. That is the only change to the asset side of the balance sheet. Then on the liabilities and shareholders' equity side, deferred revenue we know from the question is up by 100. So liabilities are up by 100 here, and so our balance sheet balances because liabilities and shareholders' equity are up by 100, and then assets are also up by 100 on the other side. So that's how the accrual of deferred revenue actually works here. Now to move into step two of the scenario, which is what happens when this deferred revenue actually gets recognized and turns into real revenue. So to model out what happens here, I'm just going to delete this deferred revenue going up by 100 here because we actually want the opposite to happen when deferred revenue changes into real revenue. So what we want to have happen is we want the deferred revenue balance to go down by 100 and then we want our real revenue balance to go up by 100. These are the corresponding journal entries. Deferred revenue goes down, revenue goes up because the deferred revenue is turning into real revenue here. So let's start with the income statement once again. So revenue here is going to be up by 100. That flows throughout the rest of the income statement. So operating income is up by 100, pre-tax income is up by 100, and then net income here, if you assume a 40% tax rate, is up by 60. So that's the income statement. The cash flow statement, so net income is up by 60, but then deferred revenue going down, remember when a liability goes down, that drains your cash flow. So that subtracts 100 from our cash flow. So overall, cash flow from operations is down by 40 here. No changes under investing or financing activities. So overall, our cash has decreased by 40 in this case. Moving over to the balance sheet. So cash on the asset side is down by 40. That's actually the only change on the asset side of the balance sheet. So overall, assets are down by 40. On the liabilities and shareholders equity side, deferred revenue is down by 100. We know that from the question. So deferred revenue here is down by 100. Our liabilities are down by 100. And then under shareholders equity, retained earnings is up by 60 here because our net income has gone up by 60 because we have 100 of additional revenue. So shareholders equity is up by 60. Liabilities are down by 100. Overall, liabilities and shareholders equity are down by 40 here, which matches the asset side also being down by 40, and our balance sheet balances. So that's a simple example of how you walk through the accrual of deferred revenue and then the recognition of deferred revenue, when the balance falls and when it turns into real revenue. The most important points here are to keep in mind that deferred revenue going up itself, the instant it happens, does not affect the income statement. It only gets impacted when it actually turns into real revenue. When it turns into real revenue, the deferred balance falls, the revenue on the income statement goes up, and then those changes flow throughout the rest of the three statements. Again, if you go in the order of income statement, cash flow statement, balance sheet, 
to answer this type of question, you should have no problems getting to the correct answer here.